Good afternoon. So today, uh, I'd like to talk about the topic of faith, which uh, has come up recently in our class on mind and mental factors with Venable Cadro. And faith is one of the virtuous mental factors. And to review briefly for the people online, um, the topic of mind and mental factors is one that's studied in all Buddhist traditions, and Buddhists believe that there are six main minds, or main, or primary consciousnesses, which are the five sense consciousnesses, and then the mental consciousness. And then there are the different mental factors that accompany the main minds. And there are 50, 51 mental factors, and these can be divided into groups. And one of those groups is the virtuous mental factors. So we've been looking at uh, faith uh, as the first in this group, and at the end of class last week, Venable Kadro asked us to think about uh, faith and how we could in increase it in ourselves. And I thought that this was a very important question to ask uh, for all spiritual practitioners. And many Buddhist scriptures and commentaries have praised faith as the foundation for all the other good qualities like uh, compassion, integrity for other, or integrity, consideration for others, and so on. So uh, to review again, faith is a, virtual, a virtuous mental factor that produces a joyous state of mind free from the afflictions when referring to objects with excellent qualities, such as the law of cause and effect or the three jewels. And this comes from Geshe Rabton in his book, The Mind and Its Functions. So faith is praised as one of the most important qualities to have because it generates the aspiration that we need in order to put forth the effort to acquire these good qualities. So basically, without faith, we wouldn't have enough energy or inspiration to actually practice the teachings. So everyone has different degrees of faith and their practice in different areas at different times. And then we also learn how there are three different kinds of faith. And then the first type of faith is inspired faith. And this is the faith that knows the good qualities of objects and rejoices in them. And this leads to aspiring faith, which aspires to attain those good qualities for ourselves. And then the last is convictional or believing faith. And this is a state of complete conviction and certainty in the goodness of the object. So when I first encountered the Buddhist teachings on the Four Noble Truths in college, uh, convictional faith arose immediately in my mind when I heard the first Noble Truth, and also probably the second one. But uh, for the last two truths, I would say it was more of um, inspiring or inspired or uh, inspired or aspiring faith, uh, because at the time I hadn't really practiced the path very much and I hadn't achieved any results. Obviously, as a result, I also find the question of faith very interesting because I've never considered myself to be someone who has a lot of it. Uh, there's a book that's been passed around the Abbey here. It's called The Logic of Faith by Nyingma practitioner Elizabeth Mattis Namgyal. And in this book, she talks about how faith has become almost taboo in our modern technological society. And to many people, it implies blind belief as opposed to open inquiry and investigation. And I'd have to say that I've definitely internalized this bias. And I pride myself on not accepting anything without first subjecting it to critical analysis. However, Elizabeth Mattis spends most of her book trying to prove that reason and faith are not mutually exclusive. And in fact, faith is what enables us to test out certain hypotheses or explore certain lines of reasoning enough to see whether if something is true. And then when we do verify that truth, that will strengthen our faith in the original theory. And in this process, our faith in the theory turns from Aspired, aspiring or inspired faith to convictional faith. So again, this has been my experience practicing Buddhism. Um, my convictional faith in the first two truths gave me enough confidence to put the third and fourth into practice to see if they worked. And after having lived at the Abbey for the past three years, practicing the Dharma full time, I can say that my mind is now more stable and clearer than it's ever been, and therefore I've concluded that these teachings are valid and they're also effective. 
Convictional faith is the most powerful of the three kinds of faith. So the Buddha encouraged his followers to test his teachings as rigorously as a goldsmith tests gold by cutting it, burning it, and rubbing it. Now, thankfully, he also laid out some criteria for evaluating the validity of a teaching in the Kalama Sutta, in the Pali Canon. And this is where he said, Do not go upon what has been acquired by repeated hearing, nor upon tradition, nor upon rumor, nor upon what is in a scripture, nor upon surmise, nor upon an axiom, nor upon spacious reasoning, nor upon a bias towards a notion that has been pondered over, nor upon another seeming ability, nor upon the consideration, this monk is our teacher. When you yourselves know these things are bad, these things are blamable, these things are censured by the wise, undertaken and observed, these things lead to harm and ill, abandon them. And when you yourselves know these things are good, these things are not blamable, these things are praised by the wise, undertaken and observed, these things lead to benefit and happiness, enter on and abide in them. So here we can see that we always have to rely on our own experience and examination before we accept any teaching as true or not. At the same time, we have to be mindful of our own limitations and blind spots and be willing to admit that we do not understand everything clearly because of the ignorance that obscures our mind. And we know that this ignorance is there because we can look at poor decisions from our past and see how they've hurt ourselves and others. But even though we have to rely on external forces for sources for guidance and inspiration, we still bear the ultimate responsibility for testing whatever advice we receive to see if it brings about the desired results. And in the process, we transform our first two kinds of faith into faith based on conviction. And this is the kind of faith that we need to persevere through difficult times when we encounter doubts in the teachings or our, or our own practice. So we definitely need faith to continue progressing along the path, but I think we also need compassion and to really cultivate this. And that's because until we reach nirvana ourselves, we can't be 100% certain that it exists. And therefore, a leap of faith is always going to be required. And I think that the only thing that can provide us with the courage that we need to take this leap of faith is compassion. And that's the wish for ourselves and others to be free of suffering. <laughs>